Welcome to a new little series I've started here, and I've really wanted to do this for a long time. In here we're going to talk about different Anike philosophies and ideologies, and take a bit of a deeper look into them. Now, for starters, we're going to start with Anarcho Communism. Why? Well, pretty simple, because I'm an Anarcho Communist. But before we get into it, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and please, please, press the subscribe button as well and press that little bell it's going to help me out a lot in my development here Anarcho is another way of saying anarchy or anarchism and uh, we got a video explaining this up there but in case you're not willing to view a whole other video to get it explained let's just take a brief summary of the video and explain what anarchism is well, anarchism is the idea, a political idea, of minimizing hierarchical structures and creating a more equalitarian society. Um, the word anarchy comes from the Greek anarchia, which means without rulers. Anarchia. A form of non hierarchical society or a leaderless, rulerless society. It's usually built up from dual power structures and actual democracy. And when I say actual democracy, I got once again another video about that. But when I say actual democracy, we're talking about liquid or direct democracy with a great respect for legitimate minorities. What do we mean when we say a legitimate minority? Well, to summarize it simply, a legitimate minority is a minority that is typically oppressed and deaf and doesn't oppress back. Let's say the LGBTQ, the disabled people, indigenous people, people of color, depending on where you are in the world. In Africa, white people can be oppressed by the same racist structure. And these are all legitimate minorities, they don't harm others. But a non-legitimate minority would be fascists, Nazis, extreme right wings, conservatives. An anarchist argues that an authority should always be able to prove their legitimacy, and if they can't prove their legitimacy, they should immediately be dismantled and replaced with a less hierarchical system. And now when we say the legitimacy of an authority, we mean that the authority is absolutely necessary and that it is in the best beneficial way for the people, for all of the people. No. Examples of unjustifiable hierarchies would be states, bosses, capitalism, cis straight normative systems and racism, you name it. Examples of justifiable hierarchies would be things like teachers, parents, if you're more experienced on your workplace, stuff like this. <laughs> the other part of Anarcha Communism is, well, Communism. And this is actually something we've not really taken and explained quite freely before here. So, let's do that. Communism is the idea of a classless, wageless, moneyless and stateless society with the common ownership over the means of production. Now, that might sound contradictionary to what you're used to here, as a lot of people think that the Soviet Union was communism. It wasn't, it was an authoritarian communism, which should never be m confused with the regular communism, and certainly not with anarcho communism. So, communism is class, wageless, moneyless, and stateless. But what did that actually mean? Well, let's just follow the list. Classless means that, well, there are no classes. And when a leftist says that there's no classes, a class is usually explained as a boss, a worker, 
a slave owner, a slave, oppressor and oppressed. The last one is the broadest one. So a classless society would function on the principle that no group of people should have the right or the ability to oppress another group of people for their own benefit. Which leads us to the eradication of fascist and workplace dictatorship and instead replaces this with a form of workplace democracy. Wageless. Well, wageless means that it would be no form of wage. Now, this might confuse you as a wage is what you get paid for doing a job and we're not saying you shouldn't be paid in some way for your job, but wages needs money. And money is something that a communist wants to eradicate, which leads us to the eradication of wages as well. So what do we want to replace it with? Well, most of us would argue that a gift economy is the most efficient way. Now, we're not saying that money haven't had its uses. It have absolutely had its uses. But we've come to the point where money is a magical card. Actually, this is money nowadays. And to be frank, this isn't a lot. It's a magical little card I put in a machine that it takes what are you going to remove for digits from this card. It's not any paper money anymore. We're not dealing with these because these aren't important in our current society. All we do is through cards. And that proves that we wouldn't even need to have cards. We'd just be able to put the digits in so that the store knows, okay, this has been consumed, we'll replace that. Nay. If you want a further explanation of the gift economy, I'm totally willing to do that. I'm probably going to end up doing it just because it's really needed. Communism is also stateless, which is something it totally shares with anarchism, as statelessness is a big part of anarchism. But what does the eradication of the state mean? Now, it doesn't mean that we should eradicate all forms of governments. It doesn't mean that there's no laws. What a state is, is a centralized minority with the authority and a monopoly on the legitimate uses of violence. Instead, a communist society would function in a form of liquid or direct democracy instead of having representatives that can't represent you properly and that gets corrupt. You start to see how anarchism and communism works really well together. Lastly, we got common ownership over the means of production, which is a lot to consume there. It's a long sentence with a lot of heavy words. Well, common ownership basically means the people who use it own it, and the people who don't use it doesn't own it. In comparison to private or public ownership, where either a private individual owns it without the usage of it, or that a state owns it. Now, none of these would work in communism, which means the workers need to own the means of production in the most literal way through common ownership over the means of production. Now, what is the means of production? Well, the means of production is, well, what you need to have to be able to produce goods and services for a society. Say that you're a teacher and the things you use in your workplace, in the school, is your means of production. Or if you work in a factory, the machines and tools you use are the means of production. You own these as a worker, and if you stop working there, you stop owning it. Exactly like common land used to be, anyone could use it, and anyone could just take up some land, start using it, and if someone else wanted to use some other land, they could just start using it. They didn't need to pay for it, they just owned it because they used it. 
and if they used it with someone else, they owned it together. Now, this is also something I'm most likely going to need to make another video about. Well, how do regular communism differ from anarcho communism? Well, communism is a classless, wageless, moneyless, and stateless society with a common ownership over the means of production. What's the difference between that and anarcho communism? Well, anarcho communism is also based upon the principles of anarchism, which means liberty for the individuals. The greatest example of this would be your body, your ownership of your own bodily autonomy, meaning you can do whatever the fuck you want with your own body. It's yours, and it's yours to be. Anarchism is based in expanding the human liberties and being able to have everyone to have expanded liberties without the consequence of these liberties hindering other people from having their own liberties. Meaning you can't kill or own a person because that removes their liberties. Another great example of this will be when anarchists don't want unnecessary rules, a, a regular communist might still want them. An example of this would of course be drug legalization as anarchism proposes that all drugs should be legal, you should be able to do all the drugs you fucking want without feeling the need to fear that a police will come and beat you up for it and if you get addicted you should be able to get help at a hospital to treat your addiction. It's really straightforward. I think I've named this many times before. Cause do drugs cause this is a really big factor or methods. Like an anarchist and a communist have very different methods in how to reach communism. <laughs> Nanaku communists propose that we should directly eradicate the state. We can't have the state. The state is hindering us from reaching communism. While a regular communist would argue that they should use the aid of a state to create a stateless society. Now, I hope this helps you understand the main idea of anarcho-communism and what it means to be an anarcho-communist. If you got any further questions, please leave a comment down below, like the video, hit that subscribe button and watch this video that you're seeing on your screen because it's a real banger and without further ado, see you next time.